Welcome to this video presentation on oxidation states, commonly referred to as oxidation numbers. Our learning outcomes for this presentation are Define what an oxidation state represents Determine the oxidation state or number using six rules Use oxidation states to determine whether a process is oxidation or reduction Use oxidation states to determine the number of electrons transferred in a chemical change. Let's start by defining what an oxidation state or number is. An oxidation state is a number that represents the number of electrons that an atom has lost when compared to its elemental state. There are two types of loss that this could include. A total loss of electrons from an atom like when a metal atom like magnesium forms a cation by losing electrons and this idea was introduced in year 11 or a loss of electrons due to them being used in forming bonds with other atoms like when carbon uses its four valence electrons to form four covalent bonds with oxygen when forming a molecule of carbon dioxide. For example, magnesium metal contains atoms of magnesium these atoms have all of the 12 electrons, so the oxidation state of the magnesium will be zero. That is, zero electrons have been lost. Magnesium ions have two less electrons, so the oxidation state of the magnesium is now positive two. That is, two electrons have been lost from the magnesium. There can be a negative oxidation state. This would show that electrons have been gained by the atom. A good example of this is chlorine. A chlorine atom in a chlorine molecule has all of its 17 electrons, so the oxidation state will be zero. A chloride ion has 18 electrons, i.e. a full valence shell, as it has gained one electron when the ion was formed. So the chlorine now has an oxidation state of negative one, showing that it has gained one electron. In order to work out the oxidation state of atoms, we apply these six rules. You should have a copy of these rules written into your notes. If not, then pause the video at this point and either copy them down or take a screenshot. As you develop your understanding of electrons and bonding, you should review each rule to see how it applies. Then they will make more sense to you than just six rules to memorise. We will now look at each rule in turn and use some examples to illustrate them. The first rule applies to atoms in their elemental state. These atoms still have all of their electrons, so their oxidation states are zero. This includes atoms in metallic substances or metals, and the atoms of non-metal atoms in their molecules. These all have oxidation states of zero. The second rule applies to monoatomic ions, that is ions of a single atom, which all have an oxidation state which is equal to their charge. This includes the cations of metal atoms which have lost electrons. So the sodium and potassium ions with a charge of plus one have lost one electron, so their oxidation states is plus one. The calcium and magnesium ions have a charge of plus two, so their oxidation states are positive two. This also applies to the anions of non-metal atoms which have gained electrons. So the chloride and the iodide ion all have a negative one charge, so their oxidation states will be negative one, which indicates they have gained one electron. Oxide and sulfide have a charge of negative two, so their oxidation states are negative two. Rule three applies to hydrogen atoms in compounds like water, ammonia and hydrogen peroxide as examples. In compounds, hydrogen has an oxidation state of positive one. This represents the one electron that the hydrogen atom has lost to bonding. Rule four applies to oxygen atoms in compounds like water, sulfur dioxide and sodium hydroxide as examples. In compounds, oxygen has an oxidation state of negative two. This represents the two electrons that the oxygen atoms have gained in bonding. There is one exception to rule four that you need to remember, and that are peroxide compounds. The only common one that you will encounter is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. 
In this molecule, oxygen atoms have an oxidation state of negative 1. This is an important exception to remember, so make sure you make note of this. Rule 5 applies to neutral compounds, usually molecules. The sum of all the oxidation states of all the atoms in that molecule will add to give 0. So let's use water as an example. There are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in a water molecule. Hydrogen atoms have an oxidation state of positive 1 and the oxygen atoms have an oxidation state of negative 2. So our formula turns into this algebraic expression. Two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom add to zero. Rule six applies to polyatomic ions. These are ions with multiple types of atoms in them. The sum of all the oxidation state of atoms in that ion will add to give the charge on the ion. So let's use the hydroxide ion as an example. There is one oxygen atom with an oxidation state of negative two and one hydrogen atom with an oxidation state of 1, and these add to give the charge which is negative 1. The algebraic expression for this will be this. Now we use a combination of rules and simple algebra to work out the oxidation state of unknown atoms in compounds and ions. Let's try with three sulphur containing species. In the first example is sulphur dioxide. There is one sulphur atom and two oxygen atoms in this neutral molecule of sulphur dioxide. So all the oxidation states must add to give zero. We get this algebraic expression, which we solve for sulphur. Sulphur plus two oxygens add to zero. This gives sulphur with an oxidation state of positive four. In the second example is the sulphite iron. There is one sulfur atom and three oxygen atoms. So the oxidation states of these will all add to equal the charge of negative two. This gives us this algebraic expression. Sulfur plus three oxygen atoms add to give negative two. Solving for sulfur gives us an oxidation state of positive four. The third example is the thiosulfate iron. There are two sulfur atoms and three oxygen atoms, and the sum of the oxidation states will add to give the charge of negative two. That gives us this algebraic expression, which we solve for sulfur with an oxidation state of positive two. Make sure you take into account the two sulfur atoms in your calculation. Now it's your turn. Try working out the oxidation state of the nitrogen atom in each of these examples. Go back and review the six rules and apply them in these examples. Pause the video now and replay to see the answers. How did you get on? Here is an example that often trips up people. The trick here is that the oxidation state of the potassium and the nitrogen are unknown. So what do you do? The solution is to recognize that potassium nitrate is an ionic compound made up of potassium ions and nitrate ions. So we only have to work out the nitrogen atom for the nitrate ion, which turns out to be positive five. The potassium ion in this case will have an oxidation state of positive one. Oxidation states are often represented by Roman numerals instead of Arabic numerals in order to help distinguish them from other numbers we commonly use like charge. We typically write the oxidation state directly above the element to which it relates to like this. You don't have to use Roman numerals, but it certainly is common practice in chemistry. Another convention is to use the oxidation state when naming compounds to show which form of the element is present in that compound. You will be familiar with the correct convention for naming compounds with the Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus ions in them like these. You would have been taught to use the oxidation state of the iron when naming the compounds. There are older historical versions that often get used too. Iron 3 is called ferric and iron 2 is called ferrous. The higher oxidation state is the one that's given the ic suffix 
and the lower oxidation state has the us suffix. You will see this in copper compounds too. CuO is copper 2 oxide or cupric oxide being the higher oxidation state and Cu2O is copper 1 oxide or cuprous oxide. Other ones include tin 4 chloride which is called stannic chloride and tin 2 chloride which is called stannous chloride. Working out the oxidation state of an atom is a very powerful tool and becomes very useful in redox chemistry. There are two things that we want you to be able to do. Firstly, work out if an atom is being oxidized or reduced using oxidation numbers. And secondly, use oxidation numbers to work out how many electrons have been lost or gained in a chemical change. Let's look at four examples to illustrate these. When magnesium atoms are reacted to form magnesium ions, the oxidation state of the magnesium is increased from 0 to plus 2. This increase in oxidation state shows that the magnesium has been oxidized. The increase of 2 shows that two electrons have been lost from each magnesium atom. When aluminium ions are reacted to form aluminium atoms, the oxidation state of the aluminium has decreased from plus 3 to 0. This decrease in oxidation state shows that the aluminium ions have been reduced. The decrease of 3 shows that 3 electrons have been gained by each aluminium ion. When chlorine atoms are reacted to form chloride ions, the oxidation state of the chlorine has decreased from 0 to negative 1. This decrease in oxidation state shows that the chlorine has been reduced. The decrease of 1 shows that one electron has been gained by each chlorine atom in the molecule. Since there are two chlorine atoms in a chlorine molecule, the total electrons gained will be 2. When iodine molecules are reacted to form iodate ions, the oxidation state of the iodine has increased from 0 to plus 5. This increase in oxidation state shows that the iodine has been oxidized. The increase of 5 shows that 5 electrons have been lost from each iodine atom. Since there are two iodine atoms in an iodine molecule, the total electrons lost will be 10. Let's summarise what we have learnt in this presentation. You should be able to work out the oxidation state of an atom. Remember, this will take practice. An increase in oxidation state shows that oxidation has occurred. A decrease in oxidation state shows that reduction has occurred. The size of the change in oxidation state gives the number of electrons gained or lost for each atom involved in the change. Make sure you practice these ideas in your classwork and homework exercises so that you become competent in using oxidation states in redox chemistry.